Jen Logie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Green Party will not be able to support this bill. We absolutely supported the need for a rewrite, and we may have been able to support a completely policy neutral rewrite of this legislation. When we were considering previous um, welfare reforms through this House, I remember the uh, submission from the Legislative Advisory Committee um, complaining about the state of the legislation, noting that um, since it had been introduced in 1964, it had been amended, this was in 2012, 131 times, and that there had been 54 new sections added, and that there that the act as it existed included over 50 points of discretion. Now, nobody would argue, and I haven't heard anybody arguing in this House, that there was need, a need for a simplification um, to make sure that legislation that um, applies to some of the poorest people in this country and protects their ability to put food on the table on a good day should be simple and easy to follow. Nobody is arguing against that. What we are uh, upset about with this legislation, though, is that the government has taken this shared concern and used it as an opportunity to entrench their world view and their policies and attitudes towards welfare that were not in legislation and have put them into the legislation and have gone even further and applied some of their sanction regimes to people that were not covered um, by that previously. And that to us is actually a bit of an abuse of the process and, and it's a shame because actually people in New Zealand deserve better than that. Um, and I do want to say, put on record, that the entrenching of the current practice we oppose for several reasons. One, we believe it's punitive. And the second core reason is that it's not working. <laughs> that actually unemployment is not going down at the rate that labour force participation is going up. Under previous legislation, without sanctions, without this punitive approach, unemployment went down at a much faster rate as the labour force participation went up. So the approach is just not working. And people are suffering. We had the um, news last week about potential 161,000 people who have been sanctioned since these new regimes were introduced. That's probably over 100,000 children living in households that had their in already below poverty line incomes cut to a result of not actually changing the unemployment figures at the extent that we would have expected to happen naturally. So this is an approach that is not working, and the government has taken the opportunity to extend that failed approach under the auspices of simplifying the Act, which was something that we absolutely supported. So I want to speak to some of the specifics in this, because I am aware that this is actually quite a large piece of legislation. And I do want people who are affected by this legislation or who might have a need for this legislation in the future to be able to have an input into it. And I haven't heard all of the provisions in here mentioned by anyone yet so far. So I would like to outline some of our concerns to give people a point to consider for themselves and hopefully submit on the bill. And I also would say that we will be supporting the amendment to extend the consideration period um, rather than the two month shortened period that the ministers offered to support people doing that and participating in this process. So one of the things we oppose is that the government, this will entrench in legislation, where it does not exist in legislation at the moment, the investment approach. Um, so changing the purpose statement of the bill. And the regulatory impact statement noted that um, a point for doing this was to avoid um, the the um, accusations of discrimination, that to head off any legal challenge on the basis of discrimination is the justification for putting this in the purpose of the Act. 
Well, sadly, I've become quite familiar in this House with the government justifying discrimination and saying, well, you know, it'll have a short-term payoff for us. In terms of our um, welfare payments, so we think it's justified. The Green Party is never going to support that view, and we do not support putting an investment and approach into the purpose of this Act when its reason is to head off any legal challenge on the basis of discrimination. And we also want to point out that this investment approach is, at the moment, highly critiqued, um, and people aren't exactly sure what it means. Um, there are some concerns that what it means is that the government can provide services to a group of people that they think will um, return, will get them off benefit quicker. Whereas those services will not be available to people who will not be in a position to go into a paid workforce. Um, so that the government's really denying some people services on the basis that, well, they may not be able to enter the workforce. And then we have the situation with legislation at the, um, in front of the House at the moment as well of punitive services being provided as an investment to one group of people that has a real potential to actually heighten stigma and entrench discrimination as it exists at the moment. And so that this kind of provision has the opportunity to actually um, give more support for those kind of policies, um, and that is definitely not something we would want to see. And I note even kind of, I think, a very measured concern in relation to the investment approach from Bill Rosenberg from the CTU saying that, um, critiquing the investment approach and saying it's better viewed as a one-dimensional performance indicator rather than a systematic approach to policy and evaluation. So this is a highly debated um, approach that the government has, and we are not ready to see it in legislation. Um, I also want to raise the point that um, has been raised already, but about a formalises a new power to make regulations for benefit redirections without the beneficiary's consent. So 80 to 85 per cent of beneficiaries are tenanted in Housing New Zealand properties currently have a benefit redirection in place. And community housing providers have had this ability since 2014. But currently case managers um, use their, their discretion to decide whether to do a redirection or not. A mandatory redirection can leave families without enough to meet essential expenses and no individual discretion to meet those challenges. Given that benefits are often enough to survive on as it is, this will make things harder for those who are struggling. There will be the changes to the emergency benefit that will make it will be called, renamed an exceptional circumstances benefit and will require work testing and open people up to sanctions. That is not appropriate and that is a significant change in policy and extension of the government's work test regime. There's also another policy in here that will require people accessing the support a child's benefit to use it for the benefit of the child, and that will be put into legislation, which um, in the regulatory impact statement that's justified by saying it's to empower work and income staff to discuss issues with carers that fall below the threshold for child, youth and family involvement. So it's trying to make work and income staff who are already underpaid and under-resourced social workers. They are not social workers and they should never be empowered to be taking a social work role, particularly when it's in relation to people being able to get their money and be able to feed themselves. It will all also um, enables parents when they're in a split custody and, uh, situation to both be able to get the supported parent um, allowance. Now there's something pos potentially positive about that. So that's one parent has a child each and that's been decided potentially through the courts or separately. But there's also the potential for this to have a perverse incentive for parents on breaking up to split the children into each of their care so they can both get a certain amount of money. I doubt anyone in this house would want to see that eventuate. And when people are living below the poverty line, you couldn't blame them for that. But that is not going to be for the benefit of those kids at all. And the bill will also remove the requirement for notices be to be sent by letter. And while we totally support the reduction of paper, 
We need to ensure that people get these notices because it can affect their ability to feed themselves. We can't support this bill.